yes Kenya tamu sana tamu sana yes tamu sana today charity ngilu the kitui governor came out guns blazing and penned down a very emotional post through a facebook account this post was in reaction to a statement or rather a speech william ruto made some about three days ago when he was being interviewed at inoro tv i want you to first listen to this speech by william ruto and then we compare it to this post by charity ngilu today for these two incidences or other events are going to form the basis of our analysis and discussion in this video right now listen to this speech by ruto wakati nilikuwa uganda eh, karibu mwezi moja hivi iliyopita eh, rais wa nchi hiyo alinikaribisha niende ni eh, fungue mahali ambapo vaccines ya, koro, ya corona inatengenezwa mm -hmm. na vaccines zingine kwa sababu gani yule mwegezaji wa pale wa hiyo kiwanda alikuja kwa ofisi hii mahali we umeketi mm -hmm. karibu miaka miwili iliyopita akaniuliza tafadhali na tafuta vile naweza kupatana na Equity Bank mm -hmm. kwa sababu nataka wanisaidie kufanya ile coordination ya vile nitapata pesa ya kuwegeza mimi nikachukua simu nikapigia simu eh, Equity Bank nikawaambia kuna mmoja wetu wa kutoka East Africa aliye hapa mm -hmm. muko na branch Uganda mm -hmm msaidieni huyu mtu uh -huh. kama anaweza kufanya hiyo biashara anatafuta. Uh -huh. Unanielewa? Uh -huh. So wakati sasa huyo mtu alifaulu uh -huh. akapata pesa shilingi bilion tano za Kenya. Uh -huh. 150 million US dollars. Uh -huh. Akaenda akajenga hiyo kiwanda. Sasa makosa iko wapi? Uh -huh. Akiniuliza niende katika hiyo kazi ambayo kwa bahati sikujua kwa bahati nilimsaidia kwa simu moja tu yes that's william ruto talking of how he procured a 15 billion kenya shillings loan to a foreigner charity ngilu never took that lightly this is what charity ngilu today posted through her facebook account charity ngilu debunking mr bottoms up economics william samuel ruto Mr Bottoms up economy your economic model can't be explained in concrete numbers with specific expected results because it is amorphous and is meant to wink and suspecting Kenyans for 8 years as the deputy president you have been and still are the chairperson of intergovernmental budgetary an economic council ibec which is the highest executive organ where all the budgetary allocations are done in this country yet you have never made a single phone call or proposal for a manufacturing plant but you make a phone call to set up a kenya shillings 15 billion manufacturing plant in uganda who are you fooling Yes. That's charity ngilus post today in response to that statement or rather that speech by William Ruto. And also Equity Bank has also come out to deny that speech by William Ruto. So either William Ruto or Equity Bank one maybe might be cheating us. But it's only them who knows where the truth is. But now assuming that what William Ruto is saying is the truth then there are some things here we must analyze ladies and gentlemen we must now look at this bottom up economics william ruto is talking about why is he now taking 15 billion kenya shillings to uganda to set up a company in uganda instead of maybe empowering our local youth here and then also ladies and gentlemen i also want us also to look at the Ruiru small arms factory because on that same same interview William Ruto also castigated that Ruiru plant and said that that 4 billion 
could have been used to make something better or rather to could have been invested better in a better way than that so just to start with ladies and gentlemen if this speech or other statement by William Ruto is true then it beats the same narrative William Ruto is trying to propagate that he wants to empower the hustlers that the bottom up kind of economy because if William Ruto can pump 15 million Kenya shillings to a neighboring country to employ youth there then you are <laughs> then so many questions can be asked ladies and gentlemen is William Ruto really serious about empowering our youths here in Kenya or is he just talking to hoodwink the unsuspecting members of the public? That's the first que question that Kenyans, if that statement is true, will most likely ask. And then also, ladies and gentlemen, we, have all, we also know that for an ordinary Kenyan, for you to procure a loan is not all that easy. There are so many rules and guidelines you must go through to procure a loan. So here we have a deputy president who just makes a phone call and then he procures a 15 billion Kenya shillings loan to a foreigner. That also just exposes the loopholes in our financial system. You know, the kind of ubaguzi. If you have a big name or if you have a big office, then you can you are easily you can easily get loans. But if you are just an ordinary Kenyan without a big name or a big office, then you will be taken round and round in circles. So that as, as the deputy president, again, maybe what William Ruto should be doing as of now is to make sure that this, these loopholes maybe are sealed so that whether you have a big name or a big office or whether you are just an ordinary Kenyan, then you can easily access the loans very easily, just like any other person. And then another thing, ladies and gentlemen, on the Ruero small arms factory, William Ruto really castigated the president and said that that Ruero small arms factory only employs about 100 people, only 100 people. So William Ruto wanted that money to be invested in other projects that could employ about 20,000 people. Then again, ladies and gentlemen, we, Charity Gilu also had issues with that. And this is what Charity Gilu said on the Ruiru Small Arms Factory. You attack the initiative by President Uhuru Kenyatta to set up a Kenya shillings, 4 billion small arms factory in Ruiru, which you claim that the money used in the arms factory could have employed 20,000 young people. This means, this means by your own logic that the 15 billion factory you helped set up in Uganda could have, could have employed over 75,000 young people. Your choice, employ 75,000 young people in Uganda and give wheelbarrows, handcuts, and handouts to Kenyan youth. Misawatu, yes, that's charity Gilu. It's a very emotional topic, ladies and gentlemen. So again, if you look at that Ruiru small arms factory, before that factory was set up, ladies and gentlemen, we had middlemen and brokers buying these arms from abroad and then they sell it to Kenyan government. And there was a lot of bureaucracy and some kind of kickback. And you could find that these firearms they buy them from abroad and then when they reach Kenya, their price has tripled or even gone ahead 10 times. So Gilu, if you read through the, the entire post, it's a, a long post. Gilu is trying to insinuate, ladies and gentlemen, that for a very, very long time, middlemen and brokers have been siphoning lots of money through such kind of tenders. And so uh, uh, questions might also be asked, ladies and gentlemen. Is William Ruto also involved in these tenders to supply these firearms to the Kenyan government? If, he's, if maybe he's involved, then, or maybe if he's involved, then it explains us the reason why he is against this factory being set up. Because this factory, ladies and gentlemen, 
according to Gilu's explanation, or according to explanation we've gotten from other quarters, this factory is giving permanent jobs to Kenyans. And then secondly, this factory is also helping the government in saving some money. Money that could have gone into rockers' pockets. So in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the bigger picture of, of this company or this factory in Ruiru, it, it has more financial benefit to Kenya than maybe if it was not set up. Because now Kenya can, the government of Kenya can save money and can also just lock out that kind of bureaucracy that exist, existed before in this whole thing. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have much for today. So let me just conclude it there for today. But if you've just bumped on this YouTube channel for the very first time, kindly subscribe and also give this video a like. Give it a like, please. Give it a like. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Tamu sana. Tamu sana.